Okay, so after Odi on Paradise, Odi in Paradise, I always. Odi on Paradise. You know, Odi on Paradise. Yeah. Oh, thank God. I'm getting it right. Because I no, love that. You got that. it right. Yeah. I love th that sense of like ODing on Paradise. Yeah. Stuff. And of course, yeah. you, you know, if you read the play or see the play, it's, it's, uh, it's clear how, how uh, the, you know, my, my ancestors and uh, your ancestors yes. when we meet, you yes. know, <laughs> what yeah. happens. That's I, right. That's I right. That. Um, so after that happens, and it's huge and it's controversial, where does your creativity take you next? Well, this was, you know, another of the, uh, of, of a Paul Thompson initiated venture mm -hmm. that went in so many different directions that n we couldn't imagine. Mm. This was just before Thompson Highway uh, start, uh, did the Res Sisters. Mm -hmm. And always a part of Paul's work, especially out west, was a connection with native people. Like if you, you couldn't do anything about this country without running into them because they were here first. And mm -hmm. so how to do that, how to connect in terms of theater or culturally was a huge part of his work and also of, of Clark Rogers, mm -hmm. who did something called Almighty Voice, you know, a, a, a earlier. And um, through both of these people, they had met Maria Campbell, who was an author, an activist, and who wanted to learn how to do theater. And so he cooked up an idea with Maria that they would do a collective very, very loosely based on her um, you know, central book, Half-Breed. It wouldn't be exactly about Half-Breed, but we partly about that and things that happened. And so I was brought in to, and because we were working improvisationally, mm -hmm. we would, you know, I sort of had to work through the actor. So we worked uh, collectively with um, Graham Greene, mm -hmm. uh, Tantu Cardinal, um, I, I forget, uh, Bob Bainborough, other, other people, we went to Edmonton um, to do it. And I think none of us realized what we were walking into. Why do you say that? You know, well, I was a very white girl. Mm -hmm. And with no real knowledge of Native people, I mean, I always wanted to know more, but, and, and it, it was not like they found someone to do this thing that was, um, that seemed like a Native person in any way. Mm -hmm. And so, Maria's job was to kind of be the, be the research, to, to fill me up with herself mm -hmm. and this story, and to kind of make me understand being Native enough so I could at least play someone who was half Native. Mm -hmm. And we get into Native spirituality and what you can and cannot do as part of theater, and whether theater is sacred mm -hmm. by itself or something that you shouldn't include ceremonial and sacred things as part of Native spirituality. We walked right in the middle of one of the hottest territories, something that was just about to catch flame, which was the very public uh, representation of what had been done to uh, First Nations people. Mm. And Maria was already highly political, but it wasn't until later that a lot of white people kind of knew what was going on. I mean, we knew that something bad had been done to them. We knew that. Mm -hmm. But just to understand anything about the culture, it just, it just didn't happen. There wasn't that, those kind of correlations. And Maria wanted there to be a correlation so she could learn to do theater with her people. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, we're in the battle of what's sacred and what isn't. To me, theater was always sacred, and my Catholic upbringing had transferred to theater, and so to me, it's a sacred stage. You know, it is ceremonial, and I had vague ideas of the Greeks and Dionysius, and I didn't know exactly what, but to me, that was always true. It was a sacred place, mm -hmm. but not according to you know, therefore, can you really call in the spirits in the theater? No, you have to pretend to call in the spirits in the theater. And so 
it wasn't just that I was learning. It was just everything. And the um, I, 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 improvising, um, uh, you know, the male partner, Maria's partner, um, improvising her teachers, her spiritual teachers. Uh, we were walking down into territory, and, uh, and I'm a dog with a bone, you know. Mm. I didn't get it. I did get it. Somehow I would find something. I was trying to both imitate Maria and not. It was sort of fraught. And we did put together a show um, that went on in Saskatoon at 25th Street House Theatre. So we were still connecting with that, that world. And um, Maria gave totally in terms of the things she told me, where she took me. I was taken to a native ceremony that was uh, happening north of, uh, of Edmonton. I mean, my mind was blown. Mm -hmm. And my <clears throat> own spirituality, which I, I, I've never lost in a way, mm -hmm. and yearned for a sense of the divine, mm -hmm. um, this was being fed by what Maria was talking about, right? It made sense to me, you know, whether I was translating badly or not, grandmothers and grandfathers became angels, became whatever. Mm -hmm. I was brought up in, the, in this way of thinking mm -hmm. and hadn't rejected it. So it was that, but it was also the politics and the sense of humor, uh, learning about people living with this incredible um, weight of pain. Mm -hmm. And because I was writing through my acting, I was the lead person, and Tantu Cardinal was, was the uh, native teacher. Right. And Graham Greene was in the first production as, as the lover. And we had spirits in it. And I ended up improvising a lot because we found that when we came away from the workshop with other people in it, we really didn't have a play. Mm. So the way it worked out was Maria, Paul, and I got in a room, and I improvised the whole play with them feeding in. And it was very strange. It was a very strange thing. I was trying to, you know, all on my feet, we're taping some and just writing some down as I did it to find this route through. Mm -hmm. And um, who knows what Maria and Tantu were really saying to each other about this white girl who was like, you know, 